No, this is a different Beats um, because these headphones are made of vegetable starch. That's the pitch. So how do we get this cord in here? That, my friends, is the topic of this video, dynamic curves. Let's go ahead and go to a new scene here. I'm going to show you the basics of setting up dynamic curves so you, too, can simulate your curves into position. Uh, let's go ahead and go to a front view here. And we're just going to draw some curves, which we can do right here in the setup because there's a curve option. Uh, I can activate the uh, snapping tool if I want. Maybe just give it a little grid action. That's fine. And then we're just going to, I don't know, just, you know, bam, bam. Just blast some curves some, uh, curves down here. Now, nice thing about the tools in Moto, if you hold down the shift key, you can start the tool again. I'm going to click once, and I'm going to let go of the shift key because if I hold the shift key, I'll just be creating a bunch of single point and that's not very exciting. So there you go. Now, of course, if we were just doing what I'm doing there and making the same exact curve, why not just control C, control V, W, and then move those over a bit? Uh, that's fine. Uh, also, as long as we're checking things out, control C, control V, W, notice that I still have snapping on. If I hold the X key down while my handle is active, uh, snapping turns off. Then I let go of the X key again, and snapping is back on. Or tap it and you can turn it off. So that's kind of nice. Okay. okay. Uh, now I've kind of lost focus here on the uh, the curves, haven't I? All right, so here we go. We have our curves. Now what you may have noticed when I had those selected there are these little circles at the top. These are the heads of the curves. Important thing to remember, that's the start of the curve. We'll come back to that. So now let's go down to dynamics. Make dynamic curves. That's it. Pretty much done. What's left? Well, let's go over here. You see there's dynamics. You've got some curve options down here. Uh, and if I push the simulate button, and there are three simulate buttons here. The first one will simulate at the current time with the current values. This one will scrub through the time slider, length of the scene, and this will cache it, and we can see the results in real time afterwards. I'm just going to push at the current time. Hey, goodbye, curves. Bye. There they go. That's not very useful. Um, so what do we need to do? Aha, pin curve start. That means at the head of the curve, they will be pinned. Now I can push play, and still nothing very exciting. Ooh, hey, cha-cha-cha-cha-cha-cha. Now that's pretty cool. So that's it, pretty much. That's dynamic curves. Uh, now here's a couple tips for you. All right, very important thing. These curves, they are colliding with each other, in fact. Um, and what we want to do is we need to know uh, sort of how thick that area is around them. It's hard to visualize, isn't it? So over here, if you look at the solver, there's an option called debug drawing. And hey, now I can see how big they are. And that means I can come back over here. And by default, they're using the same render curve radius. Um, and you can see here, that's set to ren use render radius. Uh, so that if you have these visible using rendered curves, that will match. Uh, of course, you can turn that off, and then I can decrease that value a little bit. And now you can see they're a little bit thinner. Okay, uh, This will change the way they interact. So be aware. In fact, if you have this too large, let's just say we had it at uh, 80. Probably not too large. Might be. Um, you see how they're starting to kind of wig out a little bit. What you want to look for are these little areas where the curves overlap, okay, on themselves. So remember, these are the curves are broken up into little capsule segments, and if you get them too big, these little segments are going to start bumping into each other and doing uh, bad things. So let's just let's just be cruel to ourselves here. Um, hey, not so bad yet. It's actually kind of nice. Ah, you can see how they're starting to stick a little bit. <laughs> oh, that's good times. Uh, anyway, play with that. Just remember, scale matters. And uh, those are little capsules that you're working with there. And, uh, you know, knowing is half the battle. All right, one other little tip for you. I know you're curious. Um, what about if you want to, you know, you don't want these just hanging. Mine weren't earlier. What I showed you, the, the little headphones there is connected on one side and the other. Well, here's what you do. You grab some points, and you create a selection set. Selection, assign, select, selection set. I'm going to call this pinned. All right. Now, if we go back to our dynamic options, you see there's a pin map. I'm going to use pinned. 
And now, if we go ahead and grab the item again, what you will see is that they're pinned at the base. So now I can move it, and it's actually trying to keep these locked and these locked. And because they're so large, there's not much room for bouncing around. There you go. Yung, 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 yung. So there you go. Uh, imagine now you put a deformer using the selection set, right? Move that around in your animation, and these will stay attached. Pretty cool, huh? So there you go. Dynamic curves, a lot of fun. There's a lot more to do, but uh, that should get you started. Enjoy.